All right, well, thanks for being here. We're gonna talk about longer term trading today. What I term as position trading. Now, longer term trading doesn't mean buy and hold. It means those periods of time um, that, um, well, kind of that in between. Now, position trades can actually go years, but they don't have to. They can be three months in duration or something along those lines where there can be very, very good profits in a trade taken just by looking at a longer term pattern, a longer term setup. So why, why would we want to do um, longer term? Um, I'm gonna clear this off of here. And one of the reasons we might want to consider doing longer term, and I know folks, um, a lot of folks think, well, the longer term just carries too much risk. Um, can't do it. But here's, here's the thing, the dirty little secret in the industry, guys, is that position traders make the most money. They, <laughs> and, and have less expenses, and less stress in the market, okay? And the reason is, is because they enter a trade and they hold it for a period of time, okay? So when you're thinking about these trades, we'll look at some charts and things. And as a matter of fact, I'm gonna, I'm gonna quickly go to a weekly right here. And, and I'm gonna show you that if you bought a, we, bought a long position, on diamonds okay longer term position on diamonds purchase somewhere in here after that pullback holding that trend you would have been in the market sometime here in october still holding this trade today we're talking about some big money here the opportunity to make really, really good money. And that's just trading an index. You get involved with some stocks and one of our own members here, Bianca, um, in XL, I think it was XLP. Was it XLP? XLF, it was XLF. Here's an entry in this trade into XLF where she got in here and in that period of time took over $2,000 in profits on a single trade, a single trade. Okay, now that's why we want to do some position trading and let's get into some of the some of the things that why it might be beneficial for you to consider now i'm not certainly going to be that guy that try to talk you into doing this if you don't want to longer term hold a position okay but if you if you do think about this as swing traders we rarely have even half of our account in the market at one time. How many would agree with that? Type a Y if you say, I never even have close to half of my account in the market at any one time. Right? So we have a lot of money sitting on the sidelines doing nothing. And to be more efficient with our capital, get more skin in the game without getting overstressed out and having too many of those swing trader positions that have that volatility involved in them. The longer term position helps you put some money to work without that high risk short term swing in that position. Okay, so for me, position trading has been a really, really good fit for me as a, um, a swing trader. Okay, it's been that really good fit because the way that I do my longer term trading, the signals that I use for my longer term trading are exactly the same as what I use 
on my swing trading trades okay they're the same setup if i throw the uh th three eight trap study on this chart and take that to a weekly can you guys see that is just about the textbook perfect three eight trap setup on that weekly chart bianca did a fantastic job entering that trade and then just simply following this position up not overthinking it you got to have some patience and that's one of the things that bianca has worked real hard on and anyone who position trades you have to get some patience put together okay you have to let the trade work you don't want to see the trade just falling all apart and things coming apart at the seams on these trades um, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about holding through massive pullbacks or anything like that. I'm talking about holding those longer term swings and putting together the trades that could be a month, two months, three months, six months, a year. In possibilities. Okay. Now, when I first started learning to, to position trade, I only did it with stock, okay? And buying stock, as you know, first it, it capitalizes a great big portion of your account. And if you have that capital available and don't mind holding something over there uh, for that longer period of time, then by all means, no problem, okay? But what I wanted to talk about today is how you can utilize um, options to pick up these longer term trades. So first off, I tend to, to be more of a weekly position trader. Okay, I look at the weekly chart, I follow the weekly chart. That's the way I manage the trade. This is really important to understand guys. If you decide to do position trading, you need to manage the chart based on the chart that brought you to the trade. You guys have heard me say this before many times. Dance with the one that brought you. Okay? Dance with that, with that chart that brought you to that trade and stay with that position on that trade. You know, this morning I brought up F-E-Y-E. -E. Okay? This is a, an absolutely beautiful, low-risk, entry for a weekly setup absolutely gorgeous okay we have a beautiful little 3-8 trap here a beautiful setup in this trade our risk in this trade is low our volatility stop is nice tight and close okay so that's something to pay attention to in these charts we want that nice set up just like we would in any swing trade okay and then we have to manage it by this chart because if we go to the daily chart and try to micromanage this trade by that daily chart it'll make you sick you'll make big major mistakes in that trade You'll panic, you'll do something something wild, whatever. What we need to do is manage the trade that got us in to that position, okay? And follow along with that pattern. I can't tell you if FireEye is going to turn into a good long-term trade. I don't know that. Just like I don't know on any swing trade whether that trade is actually going to work. But I can tell you, if you can get yourself or build the patience in yourself to pick up a position that you can hold month, two months, three months, seriously, guys, it will change your account. You'll have bigger profits than you would have ever imagined in a trade when those trades work. Okay, now to get started in this, 
what I what I recommend you, that you do is you just segment segment a part of your account. We've all uh, all agree that we never have more than fifty percent of our account in the money on any swing trades anyway. So in that situation, okay, in that situation, what would you do here? Well, take a portion of your account and say, hey, I'm going to dedicate maybe 25% of my overall account. Okay? Maybe it's less, 20% of your overall account. And commit it to longer term positions, longer term trades, where we can find that weekly pattern, or I'm gonna say, if you prefer not going quite that long, maybe take a look at a three day chart. But we look for those weekly patterns, we can enter those trades, and now we're going to hold them for that period of time. As long as that stock holds that trend, holds up, holds that positiveness in the chart, we're gonna to continue to manage that trade to the upside. Okay, so have a portion of your account set aside. This is what I'm going to use this portion of my account. Put a number on it, okay? And then take that account and make sure you're not over trading that portion of your account. So for example, let's say you segment 20 grand, okay, out of your account. 20K is what you're allotting. You've got a $100,000 account. You're gonna segment $20,000 of your account over to longer term trading, okay? In that situation, then we need to follow rules so that we're not over trading, right? We need to have some rules. You guys know the rules that I usually use is I don't want to have a position, a longer term position, particularly in an option that's more than about three to 4% of my account. Okay, so if my account's 20, three to 4% of 20,000 is what? How much can we trade? How big of a position can we take? Yeah, six to 800 bucks, not six to 8K. <laughs> Maybe six to 800 bucks. If you're really confident in the overall market condition, you say, hey, this market is just flat out bullish. I'm really, really confident. I figured that, Alan. Um, you're really, really confident in the overall market. Hey, if you cheat that up a little bit more to a thousand dollar position or whatever, fine. No problem, okay? But then we're going to start working to find some longer term positions to fill that allocation here. Now, one of the things that happens when I teach a class like this is people want, they want, give me that longer term trade today. I, I want it right now. Well, the very nature of the longer term is the fact that it takes some time to find these trades, right? We have to look at longer term charts. We have to go through and look for those trades that give us that longer term aspect, that longer term nature. Okay, now some of you may look at this and say, okay, so you're giving me 800 bucks to trade. And if I'm looking at a three month contract on something, I, there's no way I can, I, I can't do it. Okay, I've got 800 bucks and if I'm looking at a three month contract, I don't have enough money to do it. Okay, then look for a smaller stock. Follow your rules. Okay, now on FireEye, probably not gonna be that hard because it's only a $16 stock to find something. And you can go much longer than three months.
Now, when I say three months, you want to do, if you're thinking of a trade that you'd hope to be able to hold, and this is where a lot of people start, you hope to hold for a month or two. Okay, think about that with an option. What happens in that last month of that option? Theta starts being a problem. So if you take a three month contract to expiration, we're hoping to get about two months of gain on it, okay? By the time we reach that third month, we need to be starting thinking about taking that trade off, right? Because decay is going to start affecting that position. And either you take that trade off as profit and just close the trade down completely, or you roll your profit into another three month contract, taking some profits out. So you get into this, you use your $800. Two months from now, this is up around, uh, let's say 1250 bucks or something, or $1,200. Okay, you look out another three months. For 850 bucks, you can buy another contract that's in the right place. You sell this trade, buy that contract. You put money in your account doing that, so you've taken a profit, and you stay in the position. Okay, so you just roll the contract. Now, what I prefer to do is I prefer to go a little bit longer most of the time on my longer term positions. So if I'm thinking longer term, I'm, I'm usually looking out there quite a ways. Now, January contracts, for those of you that don't know this, anything that's a January contract, okay, is considered a leap option, okay? Now, obviously we have January contracts going to expire here in 28 days. 28 days doesn't sound like a LEAP option, right? By the way, LEAP stands for Long-Term Equity Anticipation Security. Okay, we have 28 days on a position. That's probably got so much theta decay in it, we wouldn't even want to consider that for a long-term position. But you know how I do things. I look out there a ways, and sometimes I go out a full year to buy my option position. Okay, I go out a full year. How many in here remember when we did the Microsoft trade? I am going to go to a naked weekly. Throw that drawing on. Okay. Right here, we went long a Microsoft position. We bought a January leap option. We had more than 400 days to expiration on that trade. All right, we paid, I remember this because I talked about it so much. We, we paid $9.09 .09 for that option. So we had less than $1,000 into a single contract trade on that position. We did some selling of calls against the position where we sold calls on the way up. And we collected a really nice premium on a trade over here in August of the next year. So it was December 2016. It was August over here when we finally got called away from that position. Okay, we still made some more trades on this, but from here to here, overall in that trade, we made 99% return. Okay. Big money, the kind of money that everyone really wants to make, okay? That huge return was really easy to manage because look at the stock. It just slowly ground its way to the upside, following a trend. It was easy to manage. 
So whenever you're looking for a longer term trade, what we want to look for is we want to look for those big breakouts. Okay, a stock has been held down underneath a price level for a long, long time. Say, for example, um, this chart in J&J. &J. Back over here, this was an actual trade for me. I've got to go to this chart. This was an actual trade for me. A long-term breakout, multi-year breakout. Entering that position, and I want you to notice that if I zoom this up right into that time frame shortly after entering that trade, that there was almost four months to the upside without one black candle. How cool is that, right? So when you have those opportunities for those big breakouts, that's a place to look. Another place to look might be in something like a stock that has been really pounded down. And I mean really pounded down. And we're waiting for that setup to start coming up out of a bottom. Okay, if I throw this over here on this, on our weekly, you can see we're starting to set up a pattern here on this chart that we like to see in trades. If this were a swing trade, we would like this pattern set up. All right, now if this breaks through here, could you imagine holding this for a month, two months, or something and all it has to do all it might do is move back up toward this next resistance up here maybe somewhere up in this area but notice that's a 30 point move okay 30 points to the upside We're talking with an option position, a massive percentage gain on the trade. Okay, so you look out there and say, hey, can I take a three month, a six month? What's the best looking trade for me to take on this? We still wanna follow our same rules. We wanna be looking for an option somewhere around 70 deltas, okay? up to around 80 deltas. I prefer closer to this on the longer term trades than I do up here, okay? And I get this question all the time, well, what if I find it and it's a 67 delta? Hey, if you like the setup and you've got enough time on this trade, three, six months or something, taking a 67 delta is probably not gonna be a major problem for you. Okay, just know that this is kind of the generalized rule. I want to be in there around 70 cents on that trade or 70 delta on that trade. Okay, so I'm going to follow the same basic rules of even any, our direct, any of our directional trades. Now, let me ask you this, guys. With the 3A trap, how many in here type a Y? How many in here would say the 3A trap is really making some money from you? For the first time, you feel confident in what you're doing and it's really making you some money. Okay, so if it's really making you some money on those quick little trades, why wouldn't it do the same thing for a longer term trade? But just really racking up some big bucks. Like Bianca says, it does. How many of you would love, how, how many would you would just be over, over the moon? Having taking a trade and banking over two grand in profits on that trade. A trade that you don't have to micromanage every day. You don't even have to really bother with it every day. 
you just follow along with the position, stay with the trade, two grand of profit setting in your, in your portfolio. Now, does that take pressure off your swing trading? Think about it. If you have two, three, four of these trades, that you build really nice profits into them, doesn't that take an awful lot of pressure off of your swing trades? Buying a naked call? You're only, you, well, first off, you can't be naked on buying a call. You can't be naked buying a call. Okay. Um, JP, no. Call options have limited risk, unlimited profit potential. Yeah, if you sell, you have unlimited risk. That's right. So it's not naked. It's a limited risk position. Okay. It's a limited risk position. So you know what your risk is. We're going to set a stop loss. Now, if you don't know how to set stop losses, the volatility stop. Let me, let's ask Bianca. Bianca, did the volatility stop help you in trading this trade on XLF? You don't know where to set a stop. You set it by the price action and utilizing that volatility stop. Thank you, Bianca. No major, no change here, right? The 3A pattern is exactly the same. Okay. It's exactly the same on the weekly. It's exactly the same on the three day. All we're doing is exchanging this idea, the same kind of trade setup, everything. We look for the same kind of signals, everything. We just exchange it for a longer term position. Okay. Just a longer term thought. Now, if we look at that trade, if we go to take a chart like, um, Visa. Can trends go for a long, long time? They absolutely can. You can find those trades that even though you may have bought a three month or whatever, it goes six months, nine months or more. That's right, even years. And you can make substantial profits and you don't have to trade it big. You trade just three to 4% of your allocated amount into that trade. Don't be taking great big risks. Manage that trade just like you would anything else and follow that up. Okay. So think about maybe adding that to your chart. Now, for those of you guys who like Hike and Ashy, you can do the same thing with Hike and Ashy. I just wouldn't use the Hike and Ashy Weekly. And the reason I say that, the Hike and Ashy Weekly, remember that's averaging two weeks together. That may be a little bit too long, okay? So if you did like a two day, a two day is close to a weekly chart, right? Because it's four days averaged together versus a weekly chart. So you're going to be a little bit better served, maybe going to a four day or a three day hike and ashy. Okay, to take those same kind of trades with the two six setup 
that's laid out in, in the 2-6 strategy, where just follow those charts. I mean, how hard are these trades to take? Honestly, it's the exact same setup we look for on daily charts. Exact same setup. And we can do that here very easily. Now, I did, I did mention this, but let me go back and, and mention that if you prefer you really don't like the idea of using a weekly chart. There's nothing wrong with using a three day. Okay. And you can see those trade setups are identical. And if that gives you a little more comfort by using that little shorter term, then by all means use that. But now stick to this. So you can see right here. Did anybody see the great three day setup here? in JP Morgan that you'd already be up and you'd be in this trade right now the majority of the month because that's a three-day chart this is nine days into this move and still looking good. Okay. Now we want to look for charts just like in anything else that has that good setup, a low risk entry. We want to look for those charts that have deliberate price action. Okay. Finding charts, you know, in the financial sector right now, very, very strong, very, very strong moves you can see. Nice little strong setups. Let's go to the weekly. How about that weekly setup there in JP Morgan? Pretty easy to take, right? What about this trade over here using the two day? Could we find an entry into here? This right here wasn't very clean, was it? I could, probably wouldn't have taken this trade right in here because I need that clean setup. Okay, so if you used a two day here, that may not work for you. If you used a one day or a three day, hey, you've got some trade there that works out good. But that's something you're going to have to decide the time frame, the things that you want to trade, how you want to position yourself in that trade. So you can see this three day more closely mimics the weekly on the standard candlestick chart. Okay. And gives you those opportunities for those really nice trades for those long-term holds. And there's nothing here in this chart right now that says that you'd have to sell it, right? Oh, after a big market sell-off, Dan, I, I will have quite a few. But I need a big market sell-off to add a whole bunch. Okay. So I look for those stocks like 3M. I look for their stocks that have been overly beat down. We all know we, we all know them, right? Those stocks that just get pounded down and pounded down and pounded down and pounded down. And finally, they turn around, institutions start supporting them again. And you might have that opportunity like Starbucks. Starbucks on that weekly crossing over, a little rest or pullback, and that could set up a weekly entry into Starbucks. Really no different than right over in here. Cross over, rest, there you go. And you never know when you're going to catch one of these t trades right in here where it could go better part of a year. The upside. Weekly rounded bottom breakouts. Great place to look, Dan. Yes. Weekly RBBs. Good place to look for potential trades. WBA. If I go to an RBB chart, you're going to see this is a weekly. 
Whoops, I gotta go here. This is a weekly rounded bottom breakout pattern on WBA. A stock that's been absolutely pounded down. Now reversing back to the upside. And this could take the next couple, three months, maybe more, to rally back up here. Okay, so you look for those stocks that have just had it really, really bad. And suddenly they start to come back around. Institutions start to support them again. By the way, one of the trades that we took here last week, the last week, a couple weeks ago, we were talking about Halliburton. Now notice Halliburton here. We had this beautiful trade on the daily chart. It was a rounded bottom breakout pattern on the daily chart. Well, now look what's happened. What could be occurring in Halliburton All this needs is a little rest or consolidation in here and that opportunity that Halliburton sets up a longer term position moves us back up in here to these resistance areas and we're talking 10, 15, 20 plus points just to come halfway back up. Okay. IGT, this is something Alan brought up. I think it was Alan that brought this one up. Anybody like that round of bottom breakout pattern? This is a weekly chart. IGT, how pretty is that? Holding trend, if we go to the ribbon study or the, the, the um, three-eight trap study, I mean, the three-eight trap study, we have basically the perfect trap study trade. So they work just exactly the same. And you can trade each individual stocks. You can trade ETFs. One of the things nice about trading ETFs, and by the way, uh, um, you guys know that um, WMT, I talk about WMT all the time. I've held that since all the way back here. Excuse me. I think it's right here. Right there. Let's just put a, get a right drawing. Yeah, right there. That was my entry into WMT. I'm still holding that trade. Okay, you know those kind of trades and things like that. One of the things I don't talk much about is I don't talk about talk about ETFs or um, any of the sector trades or things that I hold commonly. But I've given you guys the the list that I work from when I do that. Okay, you have my ETF list. You don't if you haven't downloaded it it's over on the members page go to the members page go to the junk drawer and you can have that ETF list that ETF list is what I use to help family and friends do exactly what I'm talking about here holding longer term positions for their portfolios okay and we can do that you know, looking at charts like that XLF, how about how about XLK? Anybody like the potential entry that there was here in XLK? All we have to do is look. XLE is getting close to breaking its downtrend here. Break that downtrend in XLE hold as support, just like we always say. And now we've got a potential for a longer term trade. Okay. Where we can really make some big money on these positions. Is this making some sense, guys? No. What I don't want to suggest you do is just make a full diet of this. 
Okay. Unless, you know, you really want the lifestyle of, of that position trader. But have a certain amount of your portfolio, a certain amount of your capital in these kind of trades. Okay. Can you imagine... having held WMT that long and showing $50,000 profit in your account. Sitting there, 50 grand waiting, waiting to be taken. Right? That's what can be done with a longer term hold. Now this was no perfect long term hold, okay? And I don't want you to think that I never take profits on these because I do, okay? I follow the same kind of strategy that I do with swing trades. I get into the position, it moves up substantially. I usually try to take some money out of the trade. With an option trade, it's just nothing more than a roll, okay? Where I roll the contract up and out, take some money into the trade. And just because I'm holding a long-term position doesn't prevent me from trading around that position with other options. If I see another good buy entry coming into play here, I can add to this trade, right? Matter of fact, I did. I can add to that trade. I can sell calls against it when it starts to fall, protecting the trade. So it doesn't prevent us from doing anything that we would normally do in any kind of a directional trade. So we can manage these positions very, very effectively. Whether you do just the shorter term, who would have, anybody in here have a problem with taking that trade right there? Would it have been hard to have seen? Place your alert right there. Pretty simple, right? Same thing here. The exact same trade right here, exact same trade right there. Exact same trade that may be setting up right here. Okay. Just follow those bigger patterns and you'll find trades and it's just it's just in stuff that's everyday stuff. Um, Home Depot. Look at these moves. You don't have to hold these long term, but notice that this is better than a month right here. Same thing in here. Better part of two months in that one. How about these trades right in here? Multiple month trades, massive gains. Using the exact same pattern and the same skill set that you have with the 3 8 trap on the short term. Okay. So, what I'd like you to consider is if you want to do this heading into this new year, Sit down and write yourself a little bit of a plan. How are you going to do it? How much capital are you going to allocate toward this? Write yourself a little plan. Hey, I can hold two or three trades right now. That's about as, as far as I'm going to be comfortable. I'm going to hold two or three of those trades and see how much, see how that would work. Okay. If you start building more confidence, you're now you're holding three and five and seven of these longer term trades, providing some balance to your swing trading 
and better utilizing capital that's just been sitting on the sideline, not doing anything for you. Okay, so during this period of time between now and the first of the year, take the time to think about that clearly, write down that plan. How much capital? How much are you gonna risk on a trade? What size of stocks fits that plan? No sense looking at stocks that don't fit your plan, right? Why would we want to try and look at CMG if we know there's no way we can buy a CMG option? Or Amazon or something like that. That's a waste of time, right? Narrow it down. Then start building that watch list. And here's the cool thing about position trading. Everything is slower. Everything is slower. We can see these trades coming way ahead of time. This consolidation in here, look at this, one week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, five weeks, six weeks, breaks out on the seventh week. Seven weeks for us to find that plan, that trade, to set up our plan, to prepare. They're slow. You don't have to rush to a decision. Okay. They give you that opportunity to wait and, and you can be really choosy on these too, can't you? Because of the slowness of it, that you can be super, super choosy. So you build that watch list of stocks that might be coming in to that longer term setup and start working those evaluations out. And as they start to develop, you pick up a position here or there. And you just keep continue to work that plan as you move forward. Okay, now here's, the, here's something that's really, really important, guys is your stop losses, okay? Anytime you do a longer term trade, a position trade on a three day, five day type chart, your initial entry is gonna have a bit more risk in it, okay? Because a weekly chart has more price range in it, right? So there's going to be a bit more risk. Don't over trade these, keep them small. You know, how many 99% returns do you need I mean, honestly, to have a great year. So don't shortchange yourself by setting your stop losses too tight and getting yourself stopped out in a trade that's still just bouncing around in a normal range. You have to set that stop loss and leave it alone. Let's take this example over here in this nice run up right in here. The volatility stop then is only going to adjust up in that trade. This ridiculous thing keeps changing the tools on me. Apologize, guys. Um, that dot is not gonna form or be done forming until that week is complete. Okay, so your stop loss needs to be maintained here until we're finished with that move. And we start moving from there on up. Okay, so you have to be patient. That's something Bianca brought up the other day. Gotta be patient, right? For those potential winning trades. You got to let that trade work. You have to give up this idea of micromanagement. Discipline, T. Stark. Discipline. Now, when, you, when you're in a trade like this, Okay, and you're used to taking profits of 
you know, 20, 30% on a quick intraday or a quick day trade. I mean, not day trade, but a quick swing trade. That might be three or four days or something like that. And you're looking at this trade. This trade is going to smoke those profits. Right? It's going to smoke it. I mean, you'll take all of all of your quick trading and you're going to look at this one trade and it's going to be better than all of those combined in money. Okay, when you get these right, these, these numbers are amazing. All right, so then you just have to maintain the discipline. You have to look at the chart. Now, by the way, is it okay to take profits? Yes. If you feel too much pressure in the trade, take profits. Walk away. Just don't beat yourself up if it continues going higher. Just look for the next trade. Get into the position. All right? It's going to take a little bit of time and a little bit of effort to build the confidence to hold. Ask Bianca. Did it take you some time to build the confidence to hold that trade and the patience to hold those trades that you talked about this week, earlier this week, that big money that it took time, right? It doesn't happen overnight. You have to work on your patience, work on your discipline, and work to just follow the chart. You look at this chart and see this moving up and say, hey, is there anything wrong with this chart? Is there any reason that I need to sell? You know, and anybody that says that they don't struggle with that, that fight in themselves, they're not really trading. I don't care how long you've held a position, you're still going to fight that. It's normal. You're going to fight it. Okay. But believe me, when these start moving up into here and you're starting to see thousands of dollars of profit, you're going to feel pretty good about yourself for having stuck with it. Okay? Now, you have to avoid, in these kind of trades, you must, you have to avoid micromanagement. You can't look at a daily chart and make your decisions and then jump over to the weekly. If you see the daily charts, just, just do this. Whoops, I'm on the wrong chart. Flip it to the weekly and make your decisions. You micromanage these trades, you'll never become a position trader. Okay, you cannot micromanage. Once you set that stop, you leave your stop alone. Wait for the next week. Adjust your stop. Keep following those trades up. Now, believe me, it gets easier the more money that comes into that trade. Okay? Gets a lot easier the more money that comes into that trade. Okay. Uh, no, not at all, RH. You're not. You don't have to reset a stop. You set a stop as good till canceled. Talk with your broker. Usually, good till canceled stops have some kind of a time limit on them, but they might be three, six months or something like that on the time limit. On them, but yeah, good till canceled. You don't have to reset them all the time. And just continue to work that trade up. The reason I, I'm pointing this trade out, how many of you guys in here remember when I took this trade? I used options on that trade. And I reported to everyone the result of that trade. This trade between here and there. Profits. 
Now, obviously, I wasn't trading a single contract trade. All right. But the percentages are the same. If you have that smaller account, how many of you would feel bad if you just had a thousand dollar profit during that time? $2,000. Okay. That will change your trading. It will change you it will you'll no longer be when you have those big trades on, you'll no longer be that nervous wreck. Okay. Won't be this nervous wreck. Okay. So think about adding some of that to your account. And, and this is a perfect time of the year to be thinking along those lines. You know, get out there, start making those plans, allocate a portion of your account, okay, and start small. Just keep it small. Start with rather generic ETFs, okay? You don't have to trade individual stocks that have big volatility or things like that. You can trade ETFs where you don't have that major news shock or major news volatility um, based off of one stock itself to get comfortable with doing that longer term hold. It's a fun way to really increase your account. And it's a nice way to live the lifestyle of a trader. Okay. So I hope you guys found that useful. I hope you found that worthwhile. Take some time. If you're interested in doing this longer term stuff, and we can start taking, if you guys want, we can start taking a little bit more time to talk about these weekly type trades. But to kind of focus in on some of these patterns, same patterns we trade, and really turning in some special type results. Results that everyone would just be tickled to death to be able to have in trades. Stocks like CCL, would you guys agree? This has been beat down. CCL's been beat down, big time beat down. So what are we gonna wait for here? Broke higher, broke its downtrend, right? We're gonna wait for that entry to occur out here. Hopefully holding into a trend someplace. We'll find that entry into that trade. Proves that support, and we start our longer term journey. May not be here, maybe some ETF. Start small, slowly work up as your confidence builds and your comfort level with that builds. But here's the thing you have to remember the 3 8 trap works in every time frame. And if you're finding success with it in the swing trade, there's no difference in going to the weekly trade. The pattern still sets up in the same way. The pattern still works. Okay? 
whether it be short, 3-8 trap short on the weekly, it works, right? Just do it over and over and over in that down move. 3-8 trap long during the up move. Did it work here? Okay. Well, thank you, guys. I appreciate it. I will get this as soon as I can, rendered and up on YouTube. Hope you got something out of this. Oh, you guys are very welcome. Thank you very much for listening, and we'll catch you all very soon. Have a good one, guys.